Hi guys and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. This is Sequel for Beginners Part 2. Today we're going to be looking at how can we retrieve data from a database. So in the last lesson we covered uh, how to connect to a database. If you haven't checked that out, do go back and check out Part 1. Let me know what you think. Um, so we're now connected to SQL Server Management Studio. Um, we've got our window here, Object Explorer, and we can see we've got databases here. We're going to click on the little plus sign. That's going to open up a list of our databases we have on here. Obviously your databases will vary, they won't be these exact names. One database to practice with if you've got SQL Server set up at home or at work uh, is AdventureWorks, which um, if you just type into Google, I think it's available on one of the Microsoft websites. Uh, it's a great database uh, to learn SQL Server. Um, it's already set up for you, so there's nothing you need to do. Um, today we're going to be mainly focusing on the select statement. Last lesson we touched upon some data for a bookshop. Uh, so as you can see here I've got the database set up, the bookshop. So to open the database so we can query it, we can right click on that, click on new query and that's going to open up in the right hand side a panel where we can query the database. What we can also do is click on the little plus for that database to extend it. Um, we can see here we've got other options, database diagrams, tables, views and so on. Uh, if we click on tables uh, we can see here system tables, file tables, uh, we're not going to look at those today. Uh, these are two tables I've created, um, so it's quite a small database at the moment. Usually databases are made up of lots of tables. If we open up AdventureWorks, for example, look at the tables, we can see they have got quite a lot of tables in there. Um, but that's not important for today's lesson. All we're going to be looking at is how we can actually retrieve data from the database. Um, so we've got our table here, books. One option is uh, we can right click on this and we have the option to select top thousand rows. And if we click on that, that is actually going to design the SQL query for us. So we can see here it's set to select top thousand and selecting the column names from the bookshop.dbo.books. Um, we can see here the sample data from the last lesson. It's from a bookshop. Um, I've just got these data from 100 books to read in a lifetime. Um, so we can see that our data has been returned and SQL Server has wrote, written the query for us. We're going to look at how to write those query at, queries ourselves, um, but that's a little shortcut if you ever have a small table and just want to look at it. Um, it can be beneficial to have a look at that just to see what the column names are and see an example of a select statement. I'll also touch on we can extend this table further so if we click on the plus we can see that tables can be made up of columns, they can have keys, they can have constraints. So if we expand the columns we can see all our column names in here and the data types as well. Uh, data types we're going to look at in another video uh, in the next couple of episodes. Uh, I'm just going to close this for now. So this, these are query windows up here. As you can see in the first two, I haven't got anything. Uh, if you also highlight over that as well, it will show you where you're connected to. So my server, uh, desktop GA to A uh, database, the bookshop, it tells me I'm connected as well, uh, Williams B. Uh, so what we're going to do guys, we're going to close down that query window. Uh, we don't want to save any changes. Uh, so we're going to right click here, new query. So we've got a new query window. You can see here they have a name as well, SQL Query 4. Uh, we don't need to worry about that, it's just if you have loads of query windows open 
it will just give you the number. You can actually save that uh, to your local computer and it will rename itself as well. So we're looking at how we retrieve data from the database. Now what we're going to be using today is the select statement. Uh, select statement is very simple. So we've got our table name uh, of, of books, uh, our database, the bookshop. As you can see uh, in this corner up here, towards the top left corner, it gives us the name of the database as well that this query window is connected to, uh, as well as we can find out when highlighting it. Now, SQL stands for Structured Query Language, um, and it's written in plain English. So, imagine we give an instruction to somebody, I don't know, go to the fridge and get me a drink. Uh, it probably would be a bit more polite than that, uh, but let's just use that as an example. Um, so, in terms of SQL, the statement is select, and we also need to tell it where to select from. From is our table name, so we're just going to write select. We're going to put an asterisk in here. Now, the asterisk represents everything. So we're going to say, give me everything from the table books. So we've written our query. Now we can either click on execute um, or we can press F5. So I'm just going to press F5 here. Uh, and as we can see, all our data has been returned. So we want the asterisk represents, we want every column from books. Don't worry about dbo dot at this moment. Uh, we could also write this query as select from books. And I'm just going to click highlight and click F5 here. And that runs. Uh, these two queries are exactly the same. Um, we'll get into what the DBO represents uh, in another video. Now, as you can see, my query window, I've got two queries now. Now, if I click on execute again, we're going to run that query twice. So there is no harm in writing multiple queries within one window, but if you just click execute, it's going to execute everything you have within that window. If you just want it to execute one statement in particular, uh, just highlight that and you can either click execute where the big red exclamation mark is or also there's a shortcut of just pressing F5 uh, and that will just execute that statement that you've highlighted. As you can see, a uh, select statement is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to have a look at the other table we've got as part of this database, which is customers. Uh, select uh, asterisk, I like to just call all, so it's just select all from customers. And then if we execute that, uh, we're going to get all the customers listed in this database. Uh, again, if I was to highlight both of these, I would get one set of results showing all my books and one set of results showing all the customers. It's probably important to touch on as well uh, at this point guys that SQL uh, usually isn't case sensitive. Uh, you can set it to be case sensitive um, but my system is not at the moment so if I entered that in capital letters and ran that query it would still run the same thing. Uh, if you have a spelling mistake in the table, if you've got IntelliSense on, uh, it would usually underline it with a squiggly line to say, I don't recognise what that is. And then if you execute it, you will get an error saying invalid object name. So that tells you that your SQL Server doesn't recognise what you're asking it to do. Um, so we'll put that back. As you can see, the keywords select and from here are in blue as well. If we was to take out and put a spelling mistake in there, we can see that will turn to black. Um, so that's another thing to look out for when running your first queries. Another thing to notice as well, there's if you don't put the from in there, 
Uh, I've still got this spelled incorrectly at the moment. I'll just correct that uh, and try and run that query. Uh, it will give you an error to say your syntax is incorrect. So I'd like to say we always need the from clause, uh, but you don't actually in in SQL. Um, so you can just run a select, but you won't be actually selecting any data from a table. The from clause will tell you the the table or another object to get that data from. So if I just wanted to write select one uh, and execute that, I could, and it would return me the number one. Um, can be beneficial, uh, and you'll see how that will be beneficial uh, in future episodes. But for now, guys, just as a recap, that is the basic syntax uh, and how we retrieve data from a table. It's important to know your table names, and as I've shown in the expanding um, the database and the tables, you can get a list of those table names there. What you can also do as well is if you click on a table name, you can also drag that onto the screen and it will write that for you. So I could just write a query, select all from, drag that name on and execute that and that will allow me to retrieve my data from the database. So just as a recap guys, what we've gone through in this video is how we retrieve data from a database. Uh, we've looked at the select statement and the, the from, from as well. Uh, any questions, please put them in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos in the future, please subscribe to my channel.